Amen. You can be seated. We're going to dive right into the word. Praise you, Lord. Man, there's such a good presence of the Lord here this morning. I, we'll, we'll see how the message goes. <laughs> don't, don't wander off too far, worship team. <laughs> Look, we could have an agenda with a message. And, uh, you know, this sermon might, might just be for, half of this sermon might just be for another time. And so I'm not going to miss out on what God has for us because I need to speak. Uh, that's not how we roll. But uh, I am going to start a series today called The Power of One. Someone say The Power of One. The Power of One. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 133 verse 1, the Bible says this. How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity? Amen. How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity? God wants us to be uni ha have unity. God wants us to, ex and I can tell this morning that there's unity in this place because of how the Holy Spirit moved in this place. And I guarantee you that if we were to go through and talk to each and every one of you about every political view you have and uh, what's your favorite color, what's your favorite type of music, and, and I bet there would be a variety of different answers to that, yet at the same time, we're able to have unity, and we have unity. Why is that? Because unity is not uniformity. I didn't come up with that. <laughs> but unity is not uniformity. But I'm going to take that saying a little bit further. Unity is not uniformity, but there has to be uniformity on the important things. Meaning, there is no unity if so, half of us believe that Jesus Christ was actually a person, right? So there's things that we have to be unified on. And this, these are the things. Jesus Christ really lived. Yes, he lived a sinless and perfect life. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He died for our sins. On the third day, he rose from the grave victorious. And he ascended back into heaven. And he sent us the Holy Spirit to be our comforter and our helper. Now, there, those are things that there, you, we are not going to be in agreement. If, if there will be, I will not be in unity with you if you don't agree in those things. I can love you and we can work together outside of church stuff. But the reality is, as far as, as, far as where we go as a church, that is absolutely fundamental. Now, there are some other things we can throw in there, but that's not the point of this message today. Uh, but there, there, there are major things that we are going to have unity in, and then there are minor things that we're going to have some liberty in, okay? And so look, if you want to be a Calvinist, be a Calvinist all you want. I think you're wrong, but that's okay. And I'm not, but that doesn't mean you, you can't come to this church and you can't serve in this church. But what I want you to know is that there's some minor things that whatever you, you can have some liberty in believing some of the things that you want to believe. But there are some core fundamental things that we are going to trust and believe in this church. Amen? Amen. And, and so uh, unity does not mean uh, uniformity. I feel like I have to say that in like an Indian accent or something, but <laughs> unity. Powerful things can happen when there's unity. Uh, I remember playing basketball as a kid, and there was this one kid on our team. He was way better than all of us. Like, there wasn't even like a question. <laughs> you know, there's some people, they think they're better than you, but they're just a little bit better, so there's argument. No, this guy was just way better than everybody that was on the team. There's no arguing. But he was a ball hog. He just, he had to take every single shot. He had to make every single play. I mean, if he could pass it to himself, he would have passed it to himself to catch it so he could get the assist and the three-pointer at the same time. <laughs> he heard the power of one and thought it was all about him. <laughs> and so it got, and we were horrible. We got beat pretty much every single game. But he got 30 points every single game. And we scored 32 points as an entire team. Because it was all about him. He, there wasn't any unity. So soon we had a little discussion. I won't tell you who led the conversation. But we decided we're just not going to pass the ball to him anymore. And so literally for an entire game we wouldn't pass the ball. And, and guess what? We lost. But we were losing anyway. So at least we had fun. And one of a, a few of us scored more than four points. What's funny and interesting is the next year I was on a team. And there really wasn't that many talented kids at all. 
But we won, won a whole lot of games. And the reason that we won a whole lot of games is because there was a great coach and we worked together as a team. We were, we we're like the, the Celtics passing the ball back and forth and we didn't care. We were very unselfish and half of us couldn't make a basket from the three-point line anyway. And so, you know, there was unity and we won a lot of games because there was unity. The, the whole point that I'm making today is this, that we are much better when we're unified than when we are divided. Amen? Amen. Amen. Unity, now we, you can define unity, all those things, but I want us to remember this right here today. Unity in the body of Christ is about getting it right, not just being right. Unity in this body of believers is about getting it right, not just simply being right. And here's why. God is glorified through unity. The enemy is glorified through division. God is unified through unity, and the enemy is glorified by division. I feel like I have to say that one more time. <laughs> God is glorified when there's unity. The enemy is, is glorified when there is disunity or division. Romans 15, 5 through 7 says this. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement, someone say encouragement, encouragement. give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that, uh, each other that Christ Jesus had. Verse 6, so that with one mind, someone say one mind, and one voice, there you go, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, accept one another, then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. So look, we want to glorify God. We want to bring praise to God. And no church is able to do that if we're all disunified and fighting one another and arguing with one another. And so there has to be unity in this place. And I'm thankful today that this church has unity. And if we're going to continue in unity, though, we have to know this. We, th th these are just some expectations, all right? Th again, this Sunday is just shaping out to be kind of like a vision casting Sunday with the power of the Holy Spirit helping us. If, if we're going to have unity, then we can't, be in we can't be divisive with other believers. This is what I mean by that. I don't have to knock someone down in order to build myself up. Amen? I, I don't have to tear anybody else down or, or try to prove how they're wrong in order for me to prove how I'm right. What, what God wants us to do as a church is to just simply be who he's called us to be. Let's not focus on what the church down the road is doing or the church in the next state is doing. How about we just focus in on what God's called us to do and who God's called us to be. And, and, and we're, look, we need to walk in confidence in that right there. Amen? Look, as we do that, we're going to be too Pentecostal and too charismatic for some people. Crickets. <laughs> and, and look, then we're not going to be too, uh, un charismatic or Pentecostal enough for other people. For some people, we might come across as too seeker friendly. And others, we're going to come across as, as, man, we're just way too harsh on the world. And my point of saying this is, no matter what we do, if we start listening to all the voices of people around us and, and who wants this about it, you know, then we are never going to accomplish anything for, for the Lord. What we have to do is get laser focused in who we are as a body of believers. Amen? So who is that? You know who we are? We're a group of people that, that are radical about reaching the lost and seeing people set free. Amen? Amen. Listen, why? Because the Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? So if it's in the Word of God, we're going to believe it. We're going to trust it. Now, we might not be as educated, and we're plenty educated. There's some educated people in this place. But listen, we're not going to be so prideful and, and think that we're smarter than the Word of God. Amen? I hope I don't take a dump and land right inside of this uh, dunk tank here. <laughs> dunk tank. Baptismal tank. <laughs> hey, but if it happens, whatever. Well, I'll, pr I'll just keep the mic out of the water. God knows I needed to get baptized again. Pr praise God. Don't, don't let it trip me up. The steps might trip me up, but I won't stop. Listen, who are we? We are a group of people that are bold enough to believe that the word of God is true. 
We believe that God wants to reach everybody. We, listen, we don't believe that God selected some people for heaven and then chose other people for hell. That, that's just not who we are. We believe that if you have breath in your lungs today, then you have a chance that God's for you. God died for you. God rose from the grave for you. And he wants you to live for him in Jesus' name. Amen? Listen, one of our core values is to reach the lost. And, and I love this. I didn't come up with it, but I've shared it enough time where it's times it's mine now. Look, we're going to do everything short of sin to do that, to reach the lost. We're going to be radical. We're going to paint the walls of the church. <laughs> we're going we're to update things. We're going to do crazy things. Why? Because I don't want one, one little thing to get in the way. There's enough things that get in the way of people coming to the Lord. I, I want to do my best to eliminate all, everything that I can that might be a hindrance and a roadblock from somebody receiving Christ as their Lord and Savior. You know who else we are? We're a group of people that believe in the power of God. We believe that God heals. We believe that God delivers. We believe that God, he's still a God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen? Amen. What kind of signs? The type of signs that you'll wonder about. That's what a miracle is. <laughs> Amen? I want this place to be a place where people walk out and say, man, I was really loved on. I felt welcomed. The pastor, I'm not so sure about that guy, but... But man, we experience something powerful. Und I want this place to be a place where when people come in, it is undeniable that you are going to feel and experience the presence of God in this place. Amen? Amen. Why? Because he's a God that can be encountered. Yes. He's a God that can be felt. He's a God that you can have an experience with. He's not some little fat Buddha statue on a, uh, on a shelf somewhere that you can look at and rub his belly. <laughs> and doesn't do anything for you. He, he is a God that you can experience for yourself. Listen, I'm glad that your mommy and your daddy experienced God for themselves, but he's a personal God, amen? You can experience him for yourself in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, we, we, are, we, have, we believe in big faith. We're going we're gonna to take chances. I, I like to say this. I used to say this a lot when we first got here. Look, we're going to reach the lost or go broke trying. And that's still the policy of this church. We are going to reach the lost or go broke trying. We're, we're, we're not, when we go to heaven, we're not going to look back and, and have God say, man, I wish you would have ju just done a little more. You know that where I'd like to stand? I'd like to stand on this side where God said, hey, really, you didn't really have to do all that. <laughs> like I asked you to do A, but you did A, B, C, and D. You didn't have to do B, C, and D, but I thank you for the heart by which you did it. See, that is a much better thing coming from God than saying, listen, I gave you A, B, and C to do, and all you did was A. You selfish individual. You could have had so much more. So many more people could have come into the kingdom of God if you would have just stepped up and spoke up. See, that's not going to be us. Why? Because, because that's just who we are. See, what I'm sharing with you right now, this is what we're going to be unified around. Listen, we as a church, we believe in the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We believe in speaking in tongues. Why? Because it's in the Bible and pretty much 99.9% .9 of all believers of all time have believed that. It's just in America that we decided that, oh, we're going to come up with some other ideas because that might be weird. Look, I watched enough TV to know there's a lot more weird things on television than the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Like, come on. The, do I need to start listing things to you? Like, ABC News, NBC News, CNN. No, just kidding. <laughs> kind of. I don't know. Was that a, maybe it wasn't a joke. Fox News. Someone's a fan. Fox News. We need the good news in Jesus' name. Amen? Why? Because God's called us to something. We're unified and so we're not going to tear down. Now, I might make innuendos to things that we believe, but by making, uh, making innuendos, saying what we believe, that's a, not a knock on what another believer believes. But I can't control what another believer believes. I can only control what I believe and, 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 and walk in. And so we as a church, we're not going to put limitations on God. We're, and, and, you know, people do put limitations on God by bashing and trashing other believers. That doesn't do any good. You know what? When another church in our region or our area or our state or our country does something good, you know what? I don't care what their denomination is, what their background is. If they're a Bible-believing church, we're going to celebrate that and encourage them in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? See, God gave us a mission to reach those who are far from God and help people walk in the fullness and power of Jesus Christ in everyday life.
He also gave us vision to help build strong, vibrant, and healthy local churches. You know what God didn't say? Those churches you help have to be this denomination, <laughs> or that denomination, or this group. Nope. Our, our, we're going to help churches Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. That, that's what, where God's leading us. We can, and we cannot do what God's called us to do if we're constantly in division with other believers. Now, I need to take a step back. Because people have a false sense of what unity is. We have to be in unity with the body, uh, with each other. We have to be in unity with the body of Christ. But we cannot be in unity with the world. We cannot. It, it, it's not that we, well, we shouldn't. It, it's actually, in fact, the reality that we cannot. Because the moment that we start to be unified with the world is the moment that the church stops being the church. Why? The world hates the church. The world hates God. The world wants nothing to do with God. And, and so we have to understand that, that you, can't, you have to be in unity with who you can be in unity with, but you can't be in unity with everybody. And so the, where churches have failed is that desire to try to be in unity with the world. And I think that has come from a good place, a good heart, but it has failed. It does not work. What it causes is the, it causes us to be a Laodicean church. But guess what? We don't have to be that, do we? We can be on, on, an on-fire church. We can be a church that is full of the Holy Spirit. We can be a church that sees people come to Christ. We can be a church that sees God do mighty, mighty works. Amen? Amen. And so we don't have to unify ourselves with the world. But that also means that we, that doesn't mean we don't befriend people in the world. That doesn't mean we lose influence in the world. That doesn't mean we don't do things to, to help people and reach people. Amen? Amen? I feel the Holy Spirit here. I feel the Holy Spirit more on just for me to preach rather than even go off what my notes are. So I'm not even going to share my notes right now. I'm just going to preach what the Lord wants me to preach. Worship team, come on up. This is very discouraging, by the way. I prepared all week for this message. I had some wonderful thoughts in that thing. I had some tweetable quotes. And now I'm not even there anymore. Help me, Holy Spirit. If you're new to church here today and you're like, wow, man, that's like different. Yes, this week it is a little different. But that's okay. Because listen to me, we serve a mighty, powerful God who is for us and he's not against us. And so why would we want to partner with somebody or something that is actually against us when, and turn our back on the one that's for us? We should never want to do that. We need to, let, let's be all in. If, if I was daring enough to just jump in this tank to show you what all in means, I would do it right now, but I'd ruin my $59 shoes. <laughs> a thousand dollar check that I have in my coat pocket. I don't want to do that. Listen, how about, let's just be all in for the one who is all in for us. There we go. That's a Holy Spirit tweetable quote. I'm gonna, the Holy Spirit tweets this today. Let's be all in with the one who's all in for us. Amen? Let's get not get nitpicky and, 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 and all caught up in like what the music sounds like this or that. Or, you know, so what if we play songs that are on K-Love once in a while? Praise God for it. I just lost everybody with Caleb. I better go back to my notes. <laughs> my point is, let, let's not, th this is something the Holy Spirit showed me. Let's not let our preference make a mess of what God wants to bless. You know if I'm rhyming in my message, it's from the Lord. Let's not let our preference make a mess of what it is that God wants to bless. I've seen churches get divided and separated because one group wanted orange seats and the other group wanted purple seats. Well, you can tell who won out in this church. <laughs> the purple seats. No, that did not happen here. But how superficial and dumb is that? Amen? We need to just allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Let's not turn our back on the one who's for us. Let's be all in. Let, let's be obsessed with the one that's all in for us. Let, let's be obsessed with the things of God. Let's get obsessed with the word of God again. Let's get obsessed with, the, with prayer. I was thinking about, you know what the new skinny jeans needs to become? It needs to be prayer. That's what it is. I don't have a problem with pastors dressing it, whatever. Uh, we nitpick on things that don't matter. But one thing that I do want to say, I'm not going to tell you what I'm against. I'll tell you what I'm for today. I'm for prayer. I want 
want God to create a revival of prayer. I, I, I want prayer to become the new skinny jeans. I want, I want prayer to be like the mullet. It's coming back. Amen. <laughs> prayer, business in the front, party in the back. And look, if you've ever had a lifestyle of prayer, you'll agree. Yeah, you know, prayer's kind of like a mullet. Business in the front. It takes, it takes intentionality. But I'm telling you, there's great reward and happiness and joy and party time when you come to start praying in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. We need to get hungry for prayer again. Look, I don't care if you, again, Caleb, look, if you put Caleb on and you listen to that and you're, and, and you're using that to worship on your way to work, on your way back from work, while you're at work, then you know what? We're going to pat you on the back and say, keep going after it. Keep pouring the word of God into yourself. Keep pouring God things in you. Why? Because when, when he gets in, he'll change you. He'll help you. Praise God. Listen, we're, we're going to see God do more and more miracle signs and wonders. And you know what? It, there are going to be miracles of relationship building. There's going to be stories of marriages that, that are restored and, and brought, made healthy. There's going to be uh, stories of miracles in people's finances. There's going to be stories of miracles in people's bodies where, uh, for some reason, I wanted to point to my right knee. If somebody has a problem in their right, seriously, though, it, like li I literally thought I was just talking about someone with a problem in their right If you have a problem in your right knee, I want to strongly challenge you. Come to this altar and get prayer today because God might, God, in fact, not, God might not, God will heal you in Jesus' name. We are, we're going to see people healed of sickness. We're going to see people healed of disease. But even greater than that, you know what I believe the Lord's showing me? We're going to see divine health. Where, you know what's better than receiving a healing from the Lord? Not having to receive a healing from the Lord. Amen? And so that we can walk in divine health. And what we won't do is if someone does get sick, is well, they didn't have any faith. Because you know what that does? That stops up the Holy Spirit. You know what we're going to do if someone gets sick? We're going to pray for them. We're going to believe that God's going to help them and restore them. You know, speaking of unity today, you know one thing that I'm committed to do? Is never bring up anything about how anybody did in COVID. If there was somebody and they were just, they were a mask, or, I mean, they wore masks upon masks upon masks. And they got vax upon vax upon vax. You know what? I'm not, I am not looking back and, and trespassing, the Bible would say, on what their past decisions were. What we're going to do, we're going to accept them as Christ. Do you think Jesus looks at somebody and says, oh, they wore a mask or they got vaccinated or this or that? Uh, we're not accepting. No, that is not. Jesus accepts. The same thing for the crazier folk that didn't get vaccinated and wouldn't wear a mask and got COVID three different times and you know all the different. You know what? We're gonna look. We're not gonna say you should have made better decisions. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna move forward in unity together under the reality that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Why? Why am I? Sh I know this isn't your typical sermon, but but God, I feel like God is he heading a problem off before it ever becomes a problem. God is doing a mighty work and the enemy will you know the enemy does the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy and when the enemy sees a church that's unified what he wants to do is come to steal kill and destroy you know the enemy right now is like man that church is bold they're going to take care of God's house they're they're about to do a building project at that at that church well before they actually do a building project that expands the church because there's not enough seats let me try to infiltrate and mess it up before they ever get to that level and you know what as for me and my house my home the house of the Lord we will stand for the Lord God and we will not let disunity come into this place in Jesus name amen listen there's a lot of people I'm just going to say this right now there's a lot of people that would not be able to hang here and did not hang here. Why? Because they had a spirit of disunity. And I do not stand for a spirit of disunity. Our, our first Sunday, there were 33 people in church. And that was just one service. The entire thing. I did not care, and I do not care, if for the sake of unity, we... We broke that thing down and we had 10 people show up the next week. Why? Because God, with a group of 33 disunified, uh, d divided people, can never do anything from the Lord. But I'll tell you what God can do with 12 unified people. 
God can do mighty, powerful things. Amen. I said God can do mighty, powerful things. Amen. And you know what? So, so what? We have over 200 people that call Roadside Chapel their home, church. And you know, want to know something? If we're not in unity, then it's, for, it's no good. And so I don't care if we have 30 people, 100 people, 200 people, 500 people, 1,000 people. We're going to walk in unity as a church. Amen? Praise God. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible. I want to find it. I wrote it down. Matthew 12, 25, and I'm ending with this. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself shall not stand. You know, we have a, a core value in this church called Brave Communication for a reason. If ever I say something that you don't like or you don't disagree with, let Kim know about it. <laughs> Tell Kim, email, she's our office manager for a reason. Tell her, because I don't care. No, no, I do, I, I do care. Email me, call me, let me know. You know, what you don't, what you don't have to do is talk to your neighbor. Like, do you think that, you know, it's a conversation. No, come to me. If you have an offense with somebody else in the church, go to them. Don't go to five people before you go to them. Go to them directly. Now, if you're uncomfortable and you're not confrontational, it's a very then come to me and say, hey, listen, this happened in the church and, and, and I need help with it and, and, and I want to talk with so-and-so. Come to me. And then the three of us, that's biblical. You know what's not biblical? To talk to 20 other people before from five different churches and try to get advice and guidance and all the different things. And, and, and then all of a sudden now, you can't even talk to them because you know you talk to everybody else. Right? That's not unity. We're gonna what I'm trying to say is we're gonna have unity. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is there is there is there is unity. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's miracles, there's signs, there's wonders. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, the, the, the miracles that take place are what this is our society needs today. Let's stand to our feet. Thank you.